expected to hear, and I think, I guess I should probably film this, so sorry guys, welcome back to this program. Uh, this is about the last cut here. I think you can see that. I've got this set up here. Um, we might find it closer. Place to put this and move it down to your hand held for a minute. Got this set up, tacked on here, or welded on here, or brown this sort of TIG greys, I think it's probably more welded because these are all the same weld metals and this is melted pretty substantially to get a, a fillet in there. So, um, I don't think one's melted any more or less than the other, so it's quite solidly welded on here. I've machined it down to the right height this way and put the step on the outside where the, the um, reed plate sits. And then this needs to be threaded inch and an eighth. So I've got an inch and eighth UNF tap. So we've nearly got that out of size, which is 1.044 or something inches. We'll get that out of size and we'll run a tap in it. And then we'll pull it off where it's quiet and have a bit more of a look. It's nearly a quarter of an inch off the outside here. And we'll get this welded on and cleaned up. It's got to come back quite a bit to the right height. So that should be all right. The next job is to tap it. I'll put the tail stacks back on the lathe because I took it off. Not always useful to have it on this machine, so we've taken the tail stock off, um, which is a pretty straightforward procedure. Center. And what we've got is a brand new tap. Now I'll be very disappointed if this tap just falls through this hole, but it doesn't, which is great. We'll put that in there and we'll get a spanner and we'll see if we can actually get that in there. See how successful we are with this. restoration or something it's called but it's inch and eight to you in here but it looks like it's probably gonna run in there very nicely
as this drake, I think. It's probably important because it's the main support yeah. for everything else. that through there but I've got a bit more tap I mean, magic on it it's just not a cutting oil apparently don't know what it is but it does say on the bottom not the cutting oil so and let's untap and unscrew this have a look and see what we've got the second time that tap's ever been used and it'll probably be the last time in my position but you never know don't thread a lot of things you in if we'll put him back in the box and put it away wouldn't have probably gone and bought a satin one if it had been me either so it's not a bad look at thread. It looks pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, can do with it a corner off that. I believe. that because it's quite sharp anyway these bits are welded together and we'll have a look at them in a minute I should have probably had a look at this before we got any further but this piece is on here and it's really a good job I think uh, I've got this down the size of the outside, it's almost free enough. Um, seriously, it hasn't quite, um, but I'm not going to take any more of it. Uh, it's got some imperfections in there, nothing serious, I don't think. You're going to live with that. And this is down the size, this the face here is exactly 3 eighths of an inch with a game box strap above this curve here, which it needs to be. 
When I set this up again after being well, we, we had about five thousand running, which is pretty pretty sweet to be honest. So everything's cleaned up. We're going to clean this edge here, this this um, this space here uh, up to we could have cleaned up to half inch. So eighth of an inch below that. I'm not sure what we're doing. It might be a fraction oversize. And then, not that it matters, we'll just make the other cast in the match. And this is going to be probably 10 power under. So um, we'll have to draw that to match as well. And draw this out, and we'll have a look at it on the bench. But so far, this is looking really good. There's a bit happened with six. There's a bit happened since the last one video I shot. So let's have a look and just decide where we're going here for this. Um, we put a boring bar in and we'll pull this space to match this one to the nice and parallel and then pull this one out next. There's a lot of brass, I've vacuumed up a couple of times, but there's still a lot of brass up in here. It's going to be time for another go. Position of this glue here when the, when the green plate goes on the top. It looks something like this. Uh, this is just a pretty good copy, but this is machined a bit on this recess. And then that goes in the hole. So it needs a little bit out of it. Um, with that 130 second gap, something like that. So we need to bore this and we'll just clean it up nicely. Because we're down to height here, we should be pretty exactly two and a half inches, I think, just by the water. And then this is the right height, so so far it's coming together pretty nice. I'm going to just spin that up. And we've got a little bit of shake there because this spider is probably not quite well in the center. This is all cleaned up pretty nice. I haven't cleaned this slate lip up here, and I'd like to very much, but I can't because I can't machine into here without this getting in the way. So I can't just, unless I've got a, a tool that sticks out quite a lot, then we're gonna get some chatter. And it, it's, it's nothing really, as long as it sits on this and on the center, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be plenty good. Um, this is down to the right diameter, which is five and three quarters of an inch inside and four, six and a quarter on the outside. It's really good. Nice, even wall thickness there. Like the lip here is pretty nice. It's a little bit closer here, perhaps, than here, but it's not terrible. Um, the world's cleaned up quite nice here. I've just got it down to where I think it will. It's got a line there, but it's going to look good and it's not terrible. This um I've got some marks in here and I might try and sand some more of them out before we do anything. These chatter marks are quite deep there from when we were machining it. And I think that might 
anything we could take off here where it hasn't quite cleaned up might be good. So before I take it out, I'm going to do that. Um, and then we're going to have a look at it over on the bench and sort of see where it goes next. Well, that's all cleaned up. Pretty good there. I've actually gone in with the machine that out a fraction. It only needed 0.2 or something off to clean up. quite a lot in there. There's still a few rock marks and perfection there, but we're going to take it out now. Um, got to reprint this piece um, and recast it because this hasn't cleaned up it's a bit undersized and by the time we put a thread on it there's not going to be enough meat for the for the, the, sp the spool for the valve so we've got one there uh, but it doesn't quite work so this is the old pattern and I put this much on here so that we can clean it up basically made this to size and a little bit longer and made the hexagon a bit longer too rather than being this shape I think might be best easy to hang on to and room for that I've, I've only <coughs> printed one of these another half still printing because I got stuffed up right um, this is your original it's a good pattern but it doesn't work I've got, honestly, um, a bit of a stack of these that didn't turn out. There's just another one somewhere as well, I think. Uh, one of these I didn't put the shrinkage on, which to give you some idea on the, the shrinkage amount is... That one has got the shrinkage on, but it's wrong. This one's right, but it hasn't got shrinkage, so it's that much. See, if we have a look, it's 1.6% smaller. So that doesn't work. Uh, this one hasn't got dowel holes in it. Thought of that in time. So going to print another one of these and get another one of these cast we've got enough enough paper card tube to make another another core box and that'll do this is what it looks like right this is the tube plate this is the reed plate um looks something like this probably when it's done it's got a bit of contour in it and it's got a, a recess in the top and a machined lip and a machine center. Uh, the machine center, when that sits down there, it bolts. That's what clamps the basically the the fins on the on the bell clamp down on that. Um, not quite like that, but that's what stops that moving. And. This machine surface gives us a uniform space around here for the basically the reed gap, uh, which is what blows the steam out here. So, got to make one of them. And got to make one of them. That's the next bits. And then we've got to think about one of these. This is a bit tricky. Um, Whether I do this in two pieces, I uh, an outside tube silver soldered on, and the inside piece which has got all the contours on it, and the basically a core block in there for the lever. That might be the smart way to do it. Um, 
putting three cores in this would be really nice but it's a bit of messed around we're going to have a think about that so that's okay that's the project this is going to get melted down again because it's not really fit for purpose and we'll have a look at this this is nice and flat on the bottom, right? When we welded this piece on first and machined it, what happened was that this pulled a bit, right? And when we sat this on here, um, basically it was rocked like that. And not straight, wherever you put it, it's sort of wobbly. So we thought, that's all right. But then we've welded this here, and that's fixed it. And this is perfectly flat along the back, which is really nice. And everything's to size. So we've got what's basically steam tight here. And we've got a, a good machined rip lip here. It's not quite concentric, but it's not terrible. Um, and it's nice on the outside. It's got a little bit of pitting here, uh, where it didn't quite clean up. It oxidise and clean up, but anyway, no one's going to worry too much about that. And it's beautiful from flat on the outside. All the, the curve and everything's cleaned up. So we've got a thread in it. There's a bolt goes in here. Uh, that's, I think, it's an inch and an eighth. And then the top half's three quarter or seven eighths, something like that. And then there's a nut on top of it that holds it all in place. The bell sort of looks like this coming up. And when it gets to about here, one of these is blocked off. And when it gets to about here, another one's blocked off and so on, so forth up. So might 3D print one of these if I've got enough hours in my day. I don't really have enough hours in the day to do this. And I was it promised everyone better audio on this. And it hasn't happened because of a dozen reasons, right? We've got a GoPro, which is nothing wrong with the GoPro, really. It's not, never given me a lot of trouble. And I've got used to it and I don't mind it. We've got a GoPro adapter, which gives us USB-C. And 3.5mm audio. That's all right. Peter Noddle sent me a 3.5mm audio wireless microphone which I was going to use with this um, it's got some issues I'm not sure I can't make it work so maybe it's just me but um, I'm still investigating that and I thought well this looked like a very good thing to buy so I went and bought one of these as well which is and this is an hour out of my day working this out and messing around for nothing but I'm gonna take this back because this is no good for anything um, just looking at it, you can't tell at this point what's wrong with it. You get it out of the box, you can't tell. But here's the problem. We've got basically iPhone adapter to 3.5. I thought that'd be a really good idea. But why isn't this plug on here and the pin on the microphone so you can use the microphone for something else? These are the wrong way around. There's no picture on the box that tells you which way around they go or what's connected or what happens. But this is no good for anything because this iPhone, you can't plug into anything else. You can't plug any other microphone into it. You can't do anything else with this. You can't use another microphone. You can't use a bench microphone with it because it doesn't work. It's got a, a plug on this end rather than a socket. That's just stupid. Now, we've got a microphone that we can't use with anything else either because it's got a, start, a socket on this end instead of a plug. So that's really stupid. Um, and it's a reasonably good quality one. I'm going to take it back because that's no, no good for anything. So in the pursuit of good audio, don't say I haven't done anything because I've spent upwards of about four or five hours trying to work this out and get it going this week. And there's four or five hours I really haven't got. You've got a video? which is awesome, um, but honestly, uh, we've got a stack of 3D prints. That's easy because the machine goes whether we're here or not. Um, I've got some progress on the, on the, um, 
the bowl for the whistle. I made quite a lot of progress. This has been really good. And I've got one prototype that's going to get tossed back there. Apart from that, that's all that's happened. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I apologize for the bad audio because earlier in the video it was really terrible. And if you stuck it this long, you've done really well. But um, there'll be an update soon. Thanks. I'm out. Be kind to each other, guys.